Hi everybody, Mr. C here. How are you today? I hope you're all well. Okay, fairy tales are far and wide. Another story I'd really like to read you from here, and it's called The Sun Egg. See if you can work out what it is before we get to the end of the story, because there's some clues, and it does tell you at the end, right? Here we go. The Sun Egg. Long, long ago, there was a wee, tiny elf living in the forests of Sweden. All the woodland creatures loved her for her gentle ways, especially the birds. One day, as she was wandering through the woods, she found a large, round, brightly coloured something that looked rather like the bird's eggs that she had often rescued from the forest floor. <gasps> Whatever can this be? she said. It, it looks like an egg, but it's so big. Just then, a shaft of sunlight glanced through the clouds. Oh, it must be a sun egg, which has dropped from the sky. Whatever shall I do? She ran off to see if she could find someone to help her decide what to do with the sun egg, when suddenly something hit her on the head. Ouch! Ah, now what, what, what is falling from the sky? But then... She heard laughter, and she realised it was her friend Larch, another elf who was always playing tricks. She looked up, and there he was, lying on a branch of a tree. He had thrown a fur cone at her. That hurt. Now I shan't tell you, shan't tell you my secret, she said, as she ran off again. Larch dropped down from the tree. He was sorry he had hurt her, and he did want to share the secret. So, so, so he ran after her. The elf had a very special friend called Happy Frog, who had a little restaurant by the side of the lake. By the entrance to the restaurant was a sign saying, Guests are forbidden to eat each other. And usually her customers were very well mannered. Anxious Frog and a snail were having their lunch when the elf came in. Oh, do come and see! said the elf. I have found a sun egg and I don't know what to do with it. Happy Frog, an anxious frog, hopped after the elf as she dashed back into the forest while the snail slid down off his seat. When they all caught up with each other, which in the snail's case wasn't until the middle of next week, they found Larch already there with Squirrel. Do you think this means we can have our own sun shining here all the time once it hatches out, asked the elf. I certainly hope not, said Owl, as he peered at the assembled company from high up in his tree. I couldn't go out at night, at night if there wasn't any night, if you see what I mean. While the others were thinking about that, Larch walked round the egg. Do you think it has a farm in the centre? he asked. The sun does, you know. What is all this talk about fire? asked a rather cross voice. It was Crooked Root, the old gnome who was in charge of the forest. If there is a fire, I must know about it, and it must be put out immediately, he said loudly. Happy Frog suggested rolling it into the lake, where it could hatch out without setting fire to anything. Squirrel bit off a piece mm, from, the, from the outside. Ah, ah, it tastes really bitter and nasty. Oh, do be careful, cried Elle, the elf, her voice rising above the hubbub as everyone talked at once. A thrush flew down by her side as he heard the distress in her voice. What is the matter? he said, looking at the anxious elf. I, I, I've i found this sun egg and, and, and I'm afraid the chick inside it will be hurt if anyone touches it. <laughs> Don't be upset, little friend, said the thrush. This isn't a sun egg. It is an orange. It is a fruit that grows in a far off hot land. I can't imagine how it came here. It is full of delicious sweet juice. 
Perhaps Happy Frog ought to have it in her restaurant. Well, as soon as he said full of juice, everyone started poking the orange with sharp sticks to get the juice out. They were making so much noise that a huge crow who happened to be passing stopped to take a look. As soon as he saw the orange, down he swooped and stole it from under their noses. My beautiful sun egg, sobbed the elf. Now, now, now I shall never see one again. Dry your tears, little friend, said the thrush. I shall take you to the hot lands on my back when I fly back this autumn. You're as light as thistle down. I shan't notice the extra weight. And so that autumn, the little elf did fly to the hot lands on the back of the thrush, and she saw hundreds of sun eggs and butterflies and huge brightly coloured flowers and all kinds of wonderful things. But when the spring came, she asked the thrush to take her back to Sweden to dance the snow away so that the wooden enemies would poke their heads up in the forest again. But she never forgot her first beautiful sun egg. <laughs> I guess it does look a bit like an egg, doesn't it? And if you've never seen an orange before, you might think it was. Great story. Okay? Hope you enjoyed it. So, it's goodbye from fairy tales from far and wide, and it's goodbye from Mr. C. Okay? You take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.